after I finished my secondary school, yeah. right? I've never thought of getting into the pageantry as in mm. like, you know, I, I I want to go for pageantry. Okay. Right. Uh, it was a time where I was sort of in the transition of going for my tertiary education. Okay. So it was not a focus per se, you know, and, and singing was also not literally the focus that mm. I wanted to do because mm. at the end of the day I still wanted to do law I still wanted to read okay, law yeah, yeah, right yeah. that was the ultimate career or you know line that I want to be in and it was in May so every May you know there's Kamatan yeah, Harvest yeah. Festival Harvest Festival yeah. so you have these aunties of mine who saying that it can up you know, uh, like okay, you know, okay. beauty pageant, you know, and, and that time I was still waiting for my application to do law. And I won. Mm. Okay. <laughs> that was a surprise. You got further where you expected. Uh, yeah, exactly. To be. Okay. And that actually gave me about a year where I had the opportunity to be a uh, host for you know, radio station, not radio station, TV stations. TV station, okay. Yeah. Selamat uh, pagi Malaysia. You know, it just opens doors. It's yeah, a yeah, yeah. it's a stepping stone, yeah. right? I guess you had kind of like you are, your focus is really something else. Right? Because at that same time, you already get the tastes of fame and fortune, you know, yeah. right? Some yeah. people would just, you know, I'm going to pursue this instead of... No, I, know, I was very, very focused, focused. really from, yeah. from day one. I yeah. knew exactly what I wanted to do. Wow, okay. Okay. Hi, welcome to another episode here on Feel Good. I'm your host, Joke better known as Kim. And uh, once again, if you have watched this content over and over again and you have yet to subscribe, I want to ask you, why have you not subscribed? It doesn't cost you any money and you can always unsubscribe after this. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> that is my introduction. And in the studio today, um, we have a guest all the way from, I'm going to take time to actually pronounce this, Kampong Poturidong Kyulu Tuaran Sabah. It's a long one, yes. A politician. <laughs> And Unduk Ngadao 2007 winner, similar to our Sarawakian Kumang pageantry. And fun fact, if those who do not know what is this, you can look up online. And Daphne Iking used to be a champion as well. Yeah. A talented singer, a wife, a mother, and now a podcast host as well, where she hosts a show called Smart Talks Sabah. Talking about issues in and about Sabah. So ladies and gentlemen, Joanna Sue Henley Rampas in the studio. Yay! Hi. Can you do a brief introduction about yourself after whatever I've <laughs> mentioned? I think you've mentioned quite a bit already. Uh, everything is already everything there. Is there, uh, there uh, everything is there. You know, is everything there. is already there. There's nothing much uh, for me to add there. But yeah, um, I'm actually very grateful and very thankful for actually to be to be here, you know, um, and to be in your show. You know, Thank I, you very much. I, I just want to feel good yeah, in this yeah. conversation today. <laughs> okay, yeah. so the aim of the show... Uh, it's very different from what you, you are doing. Mm. Uh, the aim of the show here is you just try to spread a little positivity, even just a bit in every episode. That's all. Okay. All right. So because we know social media and uh, contents that we consume nowadays, a lot of negative stuff. Yeah. So we're going to ch change it a little bit. Okay. Sure. So warm up. Okay. Before we do that, as I mentioned, when we start, right, I say politician. So we were warned that we don't talk about politics, which I'm not going to talk about politics. <laughs> And we're going to Santai talk on it. Lah, huh? okay. So, a warm-up question before we start. Mm. If you could go back to one historical event, just to have a look, huh? don't change anything, mm. right? Uh, I think we have mentioned this before, like somebody say, I want to go back and kill somebody. So, no, you cannot change anything, <laughs> but you just go back and have a look. What would it be and why? Something that I have done in the past, yeah? Mm. Doesn't matter, a historical event... Like, I just want to go back to World War One and just have a look. I don't know why I mentioned World War One. Why are so you going so <laughs> back? It's so, it's so World dark. It's so dark. I'm like, oh, I want to I wanna go see when Mother Teresa did her wonderful job. Oh, Things like, you know, right, right. It's historical event. Okay, you know what's my historical event that I really want to uh, actually want to see? Yeah. Um, I would love to meet my grandfather. Oh, okay. You've never met him? No. Oh, okay. Um... I have a very deep connection with my, oh, uh, my 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 kampung lah. Okay. Right. Uh, 
uh, maybe I could mention also mm. uh, on the introduction that uh, I'm actually half English and half Dusun, mm. right? So I have my paternal side, which is uh, his English, and my uh, maternal side, Dusun, right? From Kampung Poturidong, Kulu, mm. right? And my grandfather was the founder of Kulu oh. in World War Two. Ah, okay. Since okay. you mentioned World War One, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Since I mentioned. <laughs> This is something that I would really love to be able to go back to if I had the opportunity. Okay, okay. But he, uh, unfortunately, he passed away in the 1970s. Okay. To which I was not born yet, yeah, non-existent. Yeah. Mom and father haven't met yet. Oh, haven't met. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. And I would love to know and to see what exactly, I mean, he was part of the, you know, the fight for, um, you know, during the uh, Sabah, North Borneo at that time. Mm. Again, you know, I'm not trying to be talking about politics now, but again, you yeah, know, I, I, so can't, I can't <laughs> get out into from it, it right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, and he was one of the pioneers actually hmm. uh, during that time. Okay. You know, during the you know the British time, hmm. you know, and the, he he also you know he was fighting for uh, Sabah to become become uh, sort of independence uh, at oh, the time in 19 okay, okay. in that time. So I feel that if I had the opportunity and. I would go back and ask him, you know, what was his views? What would be his, you know, uh, vision for for the next generation? And I would love to get his wisdom too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so uh, can yeah. you say that it actually this is kind of like something run in your blood because you know since like your grandfather been doing it. <sighs> I guess so. Yeah. Then um, goes I to mean, you. yeah. I I hey, think. Wait, go to your mom too. My mom, right? my uncle. Yeah, yeah. but. I'm a rebel, lah. Ah, okay. <laughs> I mean, I did not follow the conventional way of, you know, there being in one political party. I I actually went to another political party, which is you know in against them. But at the end of the day, I think what is the most important thing is you know what could you actually contribute to the society. So, again, you know, coming back to the question, I would really love to meet him if mm. I had the chance. But mm. yeah, unfortunately, I can just read whatever he has done. I mean, that there's still way that is you know at least there is a connection there through his reading his thoughts and things his that readings and his in, thoughts right? even his handwritings you know ah, you can see, see that you know he had a very very beautiful handwriting you know mm. his it's you know those calligraphic types. calligraphic type. ah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. so i would love to but yeah well you know what can we do ah, okay yeah. okay Seems like we're gonna straight into politics anyhow, so I'm trying. What to do? What to do? I'm trying not to get there, lah. Huh? Yeah. Okay, so hmm. as I go through your um, profile, um, well, I, I'm not gonna lie, lah. Wikipedia. Let's go with Wikipedia instead, lah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> everything is in Wikipedia. Yeah, right. So um, I, I actually I wanted to know, like, mm. how did you? Because in the same year you joined uh, the pageantry, the pageant singing competition. Okay. Right, and at the same time, you're also gonna going abroad to study. Right. Right. That is roughly in the same, not like specifically one particular date, right. but it's about the same time. Same, same sort of years. So. Yeah. So, so tell me what about what is actually going through your right your mind. Okay. At the time. So maybe I could just make this clear, lah. Uh. You know, after I finish my secondary school. Yeah. Right. Um, I sort of. Um, I've never thought of getting into the pageantry as in mm. like, you know, I, I, I want to go for pageantry. Okay. Right. Uh, it was the time where I was sort of in the transition of going for my tertiary education. Okay. So it was not a focus per se, you know, and, and singing was also not literally the focus that mm. I wanted to do because mm. at the end of the day, I still wanted to do law. I still wanted to read okay, law. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. That was the ultimate sort of like, uh, you know, um, career or, you know, line that I want to be in, uh, mostly on policy making. I think I, well, I have to say that there's also that influence of my, you know, environment that I grew up with that I was more into that line. Okay. okay. And during in school too, we had this thing where you have that parliament system. Mm. And I was a president of a particular party in that school before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, is uh, there is such thing in school? Okay. Last time, yes, yes. Last time, yes. wait, last, wait, what talking about last time? Last yeah, time, I don't know, I don't know now. But <laughs> during my time, there was there was that you know parliamentary system where you know uh, the students were 
given the opportunity to have a taste of what democracy was. Mm. So I was okay. a president for a particular party. I okay. still remember that. Macaulay United. <laughs> oh, and okay. then I was going against another party. So it stemmed all from there, to which I, I feel that I've always had that interest uh, in, okay. in, 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 in this line. Uh, that was around that uh, high school time. Se- 17, 18 years okay. old. Uh, no, okay. 17, 16, 17. Okay. Right? Uh, and I still have that photo. My mom has still like, you know, frame that. <laughs> put it like in the living room. In now. the living, <laughs> not living room lah. <laughs> study room. Ah, study room. Okay, okay, <laughs> right? okay. So that was that. Um, and then uh, during that transition from you know SPM to um, tertiary education, there were, and it was in May. So every May, you know, there's Kamatan. Yeah. Harvest yeah. Festival. Harvest Festival. Yeah. So you have these aunties of mine who are saying that, eh, kenapa kau tidak join saja? You know, uh, like, okay, you know, okay. beauty pageant, you know. And and that time, I was still waiting for my application to do law. Ah. Uh, okay. In, in, okay. In, in, in okay. KL at that time. For A-levels. Okay. Right? Okay. Um. So I was like, okay, why not? You know. Oh, so it's just auntie just say. Auntie, yeah. This is my auntie. Kenapa abang kata kau? Kau join saya lah I mean that's Nothing like to lose what? Mo- <laughs> most, most of the, the uh, I think that's just a thing Where like a lot of them During that You know waiting for Keputusan SPM Or Keputusan going to UPU Or whatever mm, okay, You okay, know okay. Uh, uh, Application for IPT and IPTS Right They will, they will uh, yeah. pro- Pretty much You know Join this yeah. This pageant so I went. I said, "Okay, fine." You know, I didn't expect much, yeah. right? So I, of course, I'm from Tuaran, from Kulu. So I, I represented Kulu in the yeah. district level, to which I won, surprisingly. I said, "Okay," you know. Oh, okay. And then uh, I went to the state level. So I represented Tuaran in 2007, and I was like, "What, 17, 18 at that mm. time?" Mm, and I won. Mm. Okay, <laughs> that was a surprise. You got further where you expected. Uh, yeah, to exactly, be. Okay. and that actually opens. See, this is the thing when you win pageants like this, it opens windows for opportunities like advertisement. Yeah. you know, yeah. um, some job. You know, yeah. job. They call it jobs, right? right, right, right? Yeah. For for TV ads and stuff. Mm, mm. Um, and then that gave me about a year where I had the opportunity to be a uh, host for, uh, you know, radio station, not radio station, TV stations. TV station, okay. Yeah. Uh, Selamat pagi Malaysia. Mm. You know, it just opens doors. It's, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. it's a stepping stone, yeah. right? I've never thought of becoming a politician at that time. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. But I knew that I wanted to do something about it. Maybe in like, in my 40s, once I've achieved a, a career, a stable career, mm. financially stable and whatnot. Um, and then, uh, because there's like sort of like a contract that you you have to commit for like one year, you know, uh, during your reign, yeah. right? So this is what we have to understand, lah. Mm. You know, so I have to do more of my my sort of beauty pageant, uh, social work, and things like that for a year. And then in two thousand nine, yes, I have a, have a profound interest in music. Ah, uh, okay. And I sing. It's not another auntie and say, bah, no. join. <laughs> you can actu- sing, bah, why not? <laughs> Go and join. To be fair, I have to tell you that I am actually more uh, interested. In fact, I'm my passion, like my hobby, lah, my passion, my my other passion is yeah. singing. Ah, and I can okay. com- I, I compose songs. Ah, my first song that I was com- uh, that I composed was like thirteen years old. Oh wow! I mean, okay. Do you have this in the family? Is your any family members are musicians? Yes, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> you get a lot from your mother, apparently. I, I don't know. I, yeah, bless her. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bless her indeed. So, some of them say, I even look a bit like my mom too. But, uh, so, yeah, that's... Okay. <laughs> so, but, um, yeah. So, that was my mom. My mom was in the uh, musical industry too before. Mm. She was in RTM and then she ah, joined into okay. politics too. Yeah. So, yeah, it seems like I'm just stepping all the footsteps. Oh. Unintentionally, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. And then uh, that is where I went. I I sing. I sang. But at that time, you see, at that time, I've already uh, received my application and my, you know, my 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 I'll study lah. Yeah, continue. continue my study. Yeah. So I was in A levels. Okay. I was in KL, so I had to stay in KL because obviously, if you want to do law, everything has to go to KL, right? <laughs> I don't know why they said that tone, but okay. I mean, you, you have... Yeah, because we are from here, Yeah, right? Sarawak you have, right? Yeah. But, you know, for, for you had to go to KL. 
And I stayed in KL. So I was like, okay, you know, these things. See, I had the opportunity to sort of earn something from from my one year as a reigning queen for Undung Adau. And I just wanted that, you know, sort of like uh, autonomy or financial autonomy for myself. Um, and then I said, okay, maybe I should go for singing mm. while I'm studying. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, so actually my priority, uh, 80% of my time was really on studying. Mm. Um, and then, because, see this thing about law is that the first year, <laughs> you have three years. Mm. LLB is three years. Huh? So the first year basically is your marks are not counted. Lah, mm, right? okay. It's the second and third year that actually determines either you are first class, second upper, second lower. So I actually took the first year, okay. I I still try to maintain a good grade lah in 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 my you know my 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 studies, but I thought of like maybe I could do something that I like. So I joined the bintang RTM lah. Yeah, yeah. And of course there was like other you know reali- reality shows like I I think it was like Academy Fantasia and whatnot. Um, oh, you you joined those? No, no, no. Or, I or said no. I was that. But okay, okay. that's the thing, you know. Like if you are chosen for Academy Fantasia, you have to be like. You have in to it, stay, stay yeah, there, right? Yeah, you have to be I I cannot do that because I need to go and study. Study, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I said, you know, why not I just sing? You know, oh. whatever comes out of it is just. So Bintang RDM actually allows you to like you know, you can, you can still do home. your study, but at the yes, same time yes, you can participate yes. in it. Okay. Yes. So that that was actually why I joined Bintang RDM because mm, okay. it was that you know there was that convenience of me. I have to still focus on my study. Yeah. You know, I cannot fail the first yeah. year. Yeah, okay, okay. Right. And in the meantime, you know, I, I just felt that singing was just a place for me to release my tension because reading law is not it's not easy. I, I cannot even be in a lawyer's office. What, what more to <laughs> <I> say? <laughs> study. <laughs> so you need to read a lot. That's the thing. Yeah. 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 I mean, mm. memorizing the case, you know, and 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 you know, everything is is already a, a burden. Let alone reading lots of cases, mm. you know, to yeah. support your answers in, yeah. in in your you know exams and whatnot. Yeah. So the focus has still has always been study. But I guess mm. you know it was just. Uh, fortunately, I would say fortunately that the fo- a lot of the focus was. Towards oh you're singing and you are you know in unduk ngadau, mm, mm. while personally my focus has always been uh, for my studies and my career lah. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, and then uh, that was that you know I was getting jobs shows you know in in KL and in Sabah and that was that was good mm. you know I managed to save up some money and and whatnot, you know. And uh, after that, my second and third year, that's where I started slowing down my singing because that's... In the entertainment scene. Entertainment, uh, yeah, because... So, uh, so that, that means from 2007 to 2010, mm. I was very, like, you know, I can have, like, jobs when my classes were always, was only, like, three times a week. Okay. Right, so okay. at night, I can still sing, sing work, yeah, work yeah, you okay. know, and, and, you know, take take jobs and whatnot. Um, so, sorry, but by jobs you mean like you know in any adverts. fan or no, you know like advertisement, advertisement, yeah, TV, oh, okay, you know. Okay. Um, I, so I I I had a I had a good, let's say you know I had a good um taste for both worlds of something that I love, which yeah. is you know the the policy, the law, and everything. But at the same time, I also able to pursue my singing. Uh, interest. Well, I, I, I guess you had kind of like you are. Your focus is really something else, right? because at that same time you already get the tastes of fame and fortune, you know, yeah. right? Some yeah. people would just, you know, I'm gonna pursue this instead of. No, you know, I, I was very, very focused, focused. really from yeah. from day one. I yeah. knew exactly what I wanted to do. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but singing was just like, oh, okay, this is nice. You know, I can actually, you know, I, 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 I. I I have that opportunity when after my studying at night, you know, like 12, 1 o'clock, you know, you'll be like playing on your piano and come out with like melodies, you know, ah, and come okay. out with choruses, you know, and it's just so good. You ah, know? It okay. was a, a, a sense of, okay, lupus stress. Yeah, know, yeah. Right? I so I still understand. have, I don't know if I still kept it, but I have like quite a number of, you know, my voice, uh, in my voice memo that, you know, all the, the lyrics or the the melodies that, that, mm. I, I, that comes out. Okay. And it only comes out at 1, 2 a.m. For some reason, <laughs> I don't know why, but yeah. it only comes out, you know, yeah. the inspiration only comes out of that. Yeah. Then you have to go back to school. Uh, and then by second and third year, that is where everything has to uh, s- slow down because yeah. that is where I have to really focus and 
hit the, the yeah, yeah. Uh, even if what you need to get at least a second second class, class you yeah, know okay. for you to be able to really you know practice or whatever next yeah. time so that was then then i started slowing down so maybe like i was just taking one or two jobs per month uh, rather than okay. having every week every week okay. right okay. and then it started to slow down and then I've graduated uh, and I saved up some money also, you know. Um, and then I said, you know, I have to sort of go and focus more on the area that I really want to go. And at that time, I think, you know, uh, some maturity hit in Sudan. <laughs> uh, and then I'm like, okay, we need to focus on one, one area. And I went to the UK. Uh, I did my master's there in international law. That is where everything changed. Uh, okay, right. I okay. think, you know, this is where, he, you know, when you do international law, it's a lot to do about policy. Mm. And that is what I actually really like. Mm, okay. Recommendations, new ideas. How do you want to, you know, make a, a more better society, for example, right? Um, so that's where I went there and I was there for about five years. Uh, okay. Four, four years, four years. Yeah. I, I worked there for a while. I came back. Um... And then when I came, okay, that's where I I was very quiet, right? Because I was focusing on on really doing my thesis, uh, so and then doing my you know getting a job there. Mm. I had that opportunity to also work in the UK, okay, which is you know the the culture is very different, I would say. And my first job was I laid was in UK, like real <laughs> office job, okay, like okay. you know, no more like entertainment and yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So it was really it, it was it was a good experience for me, um, and I managed to like see how the working uh, sort of like world is. Then I um, came back. Uh, I just I don't know. I just felt that I'm working here. I was earning good. Mm. I mean pounds, yeah. sterling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every time I come back for like you know my two three weeks off to Sabah, you know you were like, oh wow, you know I'm I'm times five man, you know. <laughs> I'm rich <laughs> for a while. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So and I was like, it was not satisfying. Like okay. a cubicle seat was not satisfying for me. Um, of course, I had a bit of a tiff with my mom, like, and I said that I think I want to come back home. Okay, okay. So my mom was like, "Kau gila ka? Any Asian parent would say the <laughs> same <laughs> thing. Kau sudah sekolah tinggi apa sih? Kau mau balik sini? Like, there's no, there's no job prospect here, and you know, yeah, but yeah. you know, to Sabah. I mean, you know, job opportunity that everyone is just leaving the state is so sad. Yeah. But I just felt that it was not. I don't know how to say this. I felt that the 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 all the education, all the knowledge, all the skills that sort of like I I sort of possess at that time. I was like, why can't I give back to my people? People. Okay. Right. Mm. I think that was just my moral compass coming in. Okay, I, I think yeah. I think I'm going to inject here something. Yeah. I, I felt like, I do not know this is whether this is entirely true, but I felt like Macham Bonian, people uh, from uh. the land of Bonio, have this very strong urge in ourselves that... I want to go back. You know, no? we are Sarawakian, I'm proud to be one. Yes. Sabahan, I'm proud to yes, be Sabahan. Yes, exactly. If there is anything that we can do for the land, we will... Correct. Do it, you know. Yeah, whether if you have to sacrifice, you know, some parts, you know, like maybe earning a good job. I mean, a, in a, earning yeah. a good e yeah. income, yeah. you know, in yeah. London. And I was living in London, in the heart of London, you know. And oh, wow, whoa. <laughs> it's good, man. <laughs> but Wow, I, like I say... But uh, why did I take this? You know, I just felt that it was not fulfilling for me to just stay in that small cubicle and... I kept on reading about, you know, every single morning, I was not reading about the sun. You know, in England, you, yeah. you know, you, you take the tube, there's yeah. that sun uh, newspaper Paper. that yeah. you'll get in the, in the train. I said, yeah, I'm reading this. You're reading about British politics and things. But I said, what, what is it? What is it? I don't know. Bro, I mean, I'm waking up and say, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> okay. So I went and came home and I, I, I actually said to my mom, I said, you know, 
I want to come back home. So obviously she opposed it strongly. One month, man. <laughs> okay. She was like, "Are you sure? Are you sure about this?" You Every know? day she Every asked day. you the same question. And 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 uh, unfortunately, at that time, I had an injury too. Oh okay. I had a shoulder dislocation because oh. I I I I'm a fitness junkie too. <laughs> I work out a lot, so I had I had an injury to which I had to go back to recuperate. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, I had an operation at that time, and this is where a certain the political party lah at that time emerged, where that was that massive change of uh, you know uh, political landscape in the whole of Malaysia. Mm. Remember in 2018, mm. yep. this one MDB case was going yeah, on, and yeah. then in in Sabah, you know, you had this, you know, a uh, 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 a certain uh, political figure that has been there for quite some time. Yeah. Right. So, uh, uh, my political um, colleague or sort of, you know, came came to uh, invite me to say that, hey, come on, let's you're back here, you know, and let's have a talk. Mm. That to their liking, and uh, he was like, L- let's talk about it. You see, I mean, you're back here. What what can we do? Mm. You know, to to make a difference yeah. in 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 our state. So that is kind of like the start of it. The start of it. Ah. He was the one who, you know, brought me in, because I feel that okay, fine, I'm back here. But I thought it, at first I thought that maybe I could just lay a job here in 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 I mean in in Sabah, but you know, it was just coincidentally at that time that a political party just emerged. You know, everyone was really going for change, and da, da 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 da, and of course me, I'm like, oh, this is, this is, this is exactly what I wanted to do. Oh, you know, okay, okay. right? Um, that was it. But I did not expect it to be at the very young age. Mm. I thought it was like gonna be like forty, forty plus, forty plus. Yeah. You know. So I said, okay, it's now or never. And this is the thing: when you join into politics, right? It's like once you're in that column, you cannot go out <laughs> anymore. <laughs> once you're in that, you still want to talk about it. Um, that is where all it begins, like, and uh, I've okay. never, I, I've actually, I'm actually quite satisfied with my decision of being in this field. But again, you know, being in this field is not an easy thing, um, especially when you're a woman, young, mm, and uh, in in a you know a domain that is. I'm not being feminist here. <laughs> but yeah, it's male dominated. It's very let let male me say it. Uh, it's male you. dominated scene. Okay. Yeah, it's very male dominated, and for women to actually be in politics, it's a very very hard. It's, it's a tough, uh, you know, it's a tough thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there's only like how many, you know, even in parliament, you know, even in the state, you see only like only what fourteen percent. Nine percent in in Sabah and fourteen percent in in federal. In federal. Let let yeah. alone young people, so it is a uphill battle. Oh my gosh, I'm telling you, I've been in politics for the last eight years. I can tell you all kinds of stories that really sort of shape the way how I see things. We're gonna take five more hours into this podcast. <laughs> yeah, you know, okay. um, yeah, but I. You know, since we are just focusing on how you want to feel good, right? <laughs> let's not talk about the political yeah, scene, yeah. but let's talk about you know how do you overcome you know every single challenges, especially being you know young. You didn't have much experience when you entered it, you know, and politics, and and people were very skeptical about it. Even my mom was skeptical. The whole family was skeptical. Said I was a rebel. Right? <laughs> but, but your mom is already in that scene. Uh, yeah, but he's she's she was in a different. Ah, yeah, okay. you know. <laughs> she just gave me a wink, so you <laughs> if you camera didn't catch it. Now let's let's let it slip, lah. <laughs> huh? Okay, yeah. I I I really okay. So before we go too far, yeah. this is exactly what I say. You can take a person out of its patient, but you cannot take the patient out of one person. You see, when we one don't want to talk about politics, eventually somehow we just let they. You see, this is the thing. I always say, you can take me out of a kampung, but you cannot take a kampung, <laughs> kampung out, out of me. me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I have to go back to my kampung. Exactly, right? exactly. And it also helps it when I speak very fluent Lusun. Mm. So it's a it's a language in 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 Sabah where it's not. I say uh, only a handful of the young generation speaks it mm. very fluently. Okay. And I people will say, "Koni species lain sikit ba?" They will ang kapan they baca kap dusun. Which I'm having uh, also struggle to try and uh, imprint that into my daughter too. <laughs> She's also like, 
I'm did, trying. Did you, did you tell? Uh, did you teach her? Huh? I'm trying yeah. to. No, I'm no. trying to. Oh, yeah, okay, but okay. Uh, you know, father doesn't speak English. I mm. mean, doesn't speak Dusun. Sorry, ah, and okay. her, her surroundings speaks English. But ah, I'm I'm really trying, trying to, to yeah, okay. try to because I don't want the language to die as well. Okay, yeah. and there is more. I see more similarity now. Uh, because I actually come from a very small kampong as well. Uh, I don't know whether you have heard of Bau Town. Mm. Okay, Bau is a gold mining town, right? Yes. So a lot of people speak Hakka there. Mm. But now, when it comes to my generation, there's a lot of people kind of like forgotten the mother tongue. Yeah. So a lot of people don't really speak Hakka anymore, which I felt that you know it's mother tongue. You yeah. should know. You know you should and. And it's kind of like something that you should be proud of, right? It's correct. Your it's your identity. Right? It's your identity. Yeah. And I, I come from, uh, both paternal and maternal, uh, all hakas. So I'm pure haka, right? But like out of three of us, I've I have two younger brothers. Both of them don't really speak haka anymore. Mm. I'm the only one. Mm. So I really felt that it's something that we should, yeah print in our head and then you know you should teach it to the younger generation i think it's our responsibility to to you know make sure that our you know kids will actually learn learn uh, you know the mother tongue and stuff you know i i read actually when i when i came here last night i was reading an article about uh you know a, a professor from from sabah who actually wrote a, a, an article about it's easier for a child to learn uh, it, they they have to learn their native language or mother tongue first. When they have that foundation, it's easier for them to actually learn other languages. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I it's it's just a research that they've done. Yeah. Because of you know the semantics and 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 you know uh, I'm I'm not a linguistic, but they they basically said that you know you have to ensure that the early childhood education especially you have to focus on getting the children to learn their native language first before they actually move on to other languages hmm, okay. and, and it's actually easier for them to actually grasp other languages when they first know that uh, yeah, mother tongue. the mother tongue oh it, it's an it's well, a it's, that's interesting it is interesting yeah. that i've i've read this article last night so then I just felt like, okay, Joe, you have to do this to your daughter too. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I, I feel that if you're talking about that, you know, coming coming to, you know, preserving our identity, I think this is another thing that I'm very concerned about from the Sabah perspective. Um, you know, a lot of our young generation, again, you know, they they feel that, you know, it's, 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 it's very hard for them to learn the, the, the native language now mm. already. Mm. Because most of the the younger generation now just either speak Malay or English mm. or Mandarin now because a lot of them are learning. They go to SRJK schools. <laughs> I'm not so sure about Sarawak, but yeah, yeah, yeah Mandarin, is. which which yeah. is which is good, you know. Yeah, I I, good, I, yeah, I yeah, find it it good. But again, you know, it's our identity, mm, mm. and there needs to be you know sort of emphasis on making sure that our mother tongue, this native language, is being preserved. Is Dusun your first language when you were a kid? Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I grew good. up with my grandmother. Yeah. So my grandmother didn't speak a word of Malay. I mean, she did, but tunggang ah, okay. So the, So the first, and she was taking care. I mean, she was looking after me because mommy was working and my dad was also working. He was a pilot then, right? So he's traveled a lot. My mom was also working in RTM. So you know that, you know, you have OT and stuff. So I had to stay with my grandma. So I think I was very grateful that I had the opportunity to speak in a very old-fashioned manner. So I want to take this opportunity. So if you wanted to listen to Joe telling you a story in Dusun, mm. passed down from the grandmother, you can check out her Instagram. Yes. See, I've done my, a bit of my research. <laughs> my research. Right. So you can actually check it out. Because for me, I felt that that was, that was cool. Mm. Because it's, it's, you know, I don't get a lot of like stories from my grandparents, mm in my own mother mm, tongue. Mm. But, like, okay, but not, not recently. Like, a couple of years ago, I actually, I learned that, you know, and Jin Jitsa Mood, right? Sorry? Jin Jitsa Mood. Jitsa Mood, Jaya Pa, Sakit Nai, Katas. Apparently, we have a version in Hakka too. Oh! See, so, it's something that we... Can you sing? Uh, <laughs> Net Ti Ti, I forgot the second line. <laughs> Pun Fa Ti, but the thing is, there is a... It's not a very good thing like, because they were mentioning about how China goes against the Japanese. Oh, is it? <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Then. So I'm not going to go too far <laughs> into right. that. Like, huh? but, so uh, for me, I felt like, you know, 
because sometimes I felt that the elders, not that they don't want to pass down things like this to us anymore, it's because they felt that the younger generation lost the interest. And they're like, you know, I, I want to tell you, I want to teach you, I want to pass this on. But the thing is, it seems like when I tell you, you're on your phone, you're on your earpiece, you don't even listen to me, why do I, you know? I think I have a, I, I agree with you, but I think we have to look at it, you know, uh, first, first and foremost, for starters. I think everything has to start from home, mm. right? Okay, where I feel that a lot of the parents, I, like now, or, you know, the younger generation, everything wants convenience. True. Right? True. I mean, everything is just... Paling senang lah cara mau cakap, right? So yeah. if you go to school and then you learn mostly your language is Bahasa Melayu and Bahasa Inggeris, you might as well just just talk English or Malay in, at home lah. You know what I mean? It's 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 sort of like convenience, yeah, right? Yeah. And for you to suddenly change to another language, I think you know I I, f- I find it maybe you know some some parents will like ayah malas lah want to cakap, malas lah mau cakap. Yeah, even if parents already have that mentality of, you know... Ah, you know to just, be fair, I also fall into the trap sometimes because I know that my daughter goes to play school speaks English the whole time. So I'm like, how am I going to change this? Huh? Oh, is it? You know, I was like... And then I was like, okay, then I have to change my language to do soon again. Uh, right? okay, so, okay. I, I mean, I, I can't blame anyone because I also have that tendency to fall into yeah, the trap. And yeah. to be fair, the reason why is because it's all convenience. Because you want it fast yeah, to be, you know, you right. want the message to be, you know, disseminated fast to your kid. Lah, yeah, right, right, rather right, right, than, you know, yeah. and then you, you just malas lah want to explain to the kid. Like, Ma, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh no, I'm actually saying this, this you know. Uh, okay, I think okay. it's the lack of patience too. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's, it it comes from, you know, the parents. I think it's the will of, do you want how, you have to start from yourself first. Oh, okay. I also, I also want to know, uh, from, let's say from scale 1 to 10, 10 being the purest, how would you rank your purity of Dusun? 8, 9. Wow, okay. Yeah. It's really like your yeah. grand, even great grandparents' time. Yeah. Because I felt like my haka, it's already very Malaysianized. Mm. You know, we we have certain words that in original haka is not that word. Yeah. But we use it, right? Mine is about, uh, mine is about eight. Okay, my mom is 10. La. Oh, <laughs> oh, my oh, grandmother okay. is 11, maybe. Oh, my late okay. grandmother. Okay. okay. Uh, but my mom would be 10, I would say, because, you know, because I, 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 I'm trilingual, so oh, okay. sometimes you sort of forget like few words. Ah, <laughs> so yeah, you just like, thing, uh, yeah, that word again? yeah, you know. Okay, so okay, it's okay. not as 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 what I I I I will say. Saya bilang macam macam air, macam sungai. But uh, I would consider about eight or nine. Yeah, uh, okay. still okay, still still pure. <laughs> yeah, 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 still okay. But but for me, I felt that also. I mean that is not to say regrets lah, but yeah, I I lost a f- I lost like family members, uh, grandparents. Uh, I mean this year year in the beginning of the year I lost my father, and um, these are the people that I can actually extract all this knowledge about mm. my own mother tongue, and you know they are no longer around. So yeah, yeah, you have to get what whoever that is. Yeah, is. then I would sure. be stray a bit too far from. I don't know why my phone is on with questions and I don't even stick to the questions. <laughs> Uh, can I let me let me get time because uh okay so because Joe has another lunch meeting so let's not keep her too far and also too long in the studio <laughs> lah, huh? okay so just now you already and also in the introduction I mentioned you know, you are this that I also put in you are a wife you are a mother how do you juggle between so many hats. <laughs> Uh, also, <sighs> although I can say that all women are multitasker, unlike men, whereby if I drive, you cannot talk to me. I cannot. I literally, I'll drive some, I'll somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> but but how do you juggle? Um. Well, I think I I try. You see, the word juggle is is too overrated. I would say, but I I work on it. Oh, uh, okay. Right. Okay. Um. I'm just. Uh, quite uh, lucky to have a very strong support system around me. Um, okay, my other half is 
he 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 works as a as a as a doctor. Mm. So you know, uh, doctors they have o- overtime, you know, and they are on call. Call, and, yeah. Yeah, and sometimes I have to wear the hat of a mummy and a daddy at home. Okay. Right. Uh, but you see, I have my mom who was really really helping me out. So that's why I say I'm very very um, grateful for the support system that I have. And I also, you know, my, my family, especially my, my other half, has always been supportive in my line in, in, in politics, right? Uh, or whatever, you know, any field that I, I, I am willing or I'm really, you know, focused on doing. How do I juggle it? Or I actually, I work on it. How do I work on it? Well, I focus on priorities, lah, I think, you know, like what I still have my me time. Um, that is very important. I think... Which I want to ask in the next question. Okay, but, but now maybe we can just say that, you know. First and foremost, I think as a mom, and I mean, I'm, I'm a mom of a three-year-old. And three-year-old, you know, there's always this thing terrible too and it goes on to terrible, I don't know, until how old. And, you know, the attention wants to be always on mommy, 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 I want mommy. And, and I think that is one of the phase that I'm facing through right now. Even coming here to Sarawak, she was like, Mommy, where are you going? Mommy, can I go with you? You know, and uh, she'd be crying. Okay, and okay. Da, da, da. like, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just a phase. Um, and then after that, you know, again, my, my job as a, as a wife, you know, it's, it is not easy. Yeah. Right to to also have a poli- trying to have a political career and and doing other things, um, and then as you know for a fact that you know in in the political line it's you there's no scheduled time. Yeah, it's not like you know, it's like you're on call all the work, time. You, <laughs> you know, yeah. you'll get phone calls at six o'clock in the morning sometimes. Yeah, meetings you'll, late at night. Correct. Yeah. You know, and you meet people like until late at night. Um, that's why I said I'm very happy to have my mom who's helping me out all the time but I think it's going back to what are priorities first I have to first and foremost you have to focus on yourself because you cannot juggle you cannot work with anything if you don't have a how can you say a good mental health first ah okay see I- I- everything will break down mm. you know if mm. you don't take care of yourself first right, right right you see uh this is this is the important thing that i i like to also tell you know, you know my my colleagues my friends and everything you have to think for yourself first mm. before it's not selfish it's not selfish, uh, it's huh? not selfish. i'm not yeah, i'm yeah. not being selfish here but you you know when you go up in a plane and say please put your mask before you're putting on someone else right <laughs> it's there for a reason <laughs> The instruction is there for a reason <laughs> Exactly The analogy is the same too yeah. But again You know When you have a more Sort of like You know Balance uh, Like a, a strong Or maybe More calmer th- uh, Calmer side of you And then Then is where You are able to actually Do other things That's where you are able to do You be a You put your head as a mummy As a daddy Sometimes mm. When papa is not around yeah. And then You know And to also think of you know, all the political, you know, ah, political very susama, right? <laughs> the game of politics is yeah. like the game of thrones, man. <laughs> <laughs> Even more complicated. More sometimes. complicated, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's it's not easy, but, you know, I, I always first prioritize myself first. Mm. And then right after that, and I like to wake up in the morning. See, there's this 5 a.m. Yeah. club, right? Have you read that book? Dr. Kaz, if you are watching this, uh, we have another person in the studio talking the same thing as you know, because we just, uh, I mean, not no, just, uh, we talked to a fellow friend. Uh, she's a, a doctor. Uh, uh, and then she was telling me about this 5 a.m. book club. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, she told me a lot about should, you it. Should yeah. write, you should read the book. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And it actually also, it's one of the books that I actually like to read. And, okay. and it's sort of like giving me a. There are a lot of books actually, like, uh, you know, Clear Mind and then Atomic Habits. You know, these are one of all the self help books that okay. I also. I like to read. <laughs> yeah, right? okay. Uh, and, and you see. Something that I cannot find myself doing. <laughs> no, sometimes if, I, if I, I can't read, I'll just have my, like, you know, a podcast. Podcast, yeah. audiobook. I have audiobooks mm. and I just listen in the car. Yeah, you know? okay. And it's, it's, it's good enough mm. already to have, like, all this knowledge. So I always like to be, you know, very inf- well informed about things around. And I try to wake up in the morning, focus working out, you know, and try to get 
whatever that needs to be done for myself in the morning. Oh, okay. Right? Okay. Um, that's why by about 12 o'clock, you can't hear anything from me anymore, 11. So practically what the book kind of like tell you, so, la, right? Sort of, no. right. Yeah, yeah, sort of, sort of. But And then after that, then all my mummy punya job will come in, all my, you know, my daddy mummy job will come in, and then all the other jobs will come in. So you wake up 5 in the morning? About 5.30. 5.30, okay. Mm. Uh, what time do you go to sleep? But not this morning. In general, la. La. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, not all the day. Oh, no, not, not every all the day. day la, not I would say day, most, most, most of the, of the time. Yeah. Then what time do you go to sleep? In general, la. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking like... Right. By 10.30, I'll be on on the bed on already. bed already. Mm. 10.30. Oh, so you get 11. enough like... Uh, some, I, I try to get a good six hours sleep. Okay, this is very important too. I know sometimes people say that, oh, you know, I mean, you know, people sleep like, oh, they're, they're so proud of just being sleeping four hours and things like that. Sleep right? is for the weak. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> you know, but sleep is very important because yeah. at the end of the day, you know, it helps you to build my immune I- immune system. Okay, now yeah. I'm going to talk about this because <laughs> I live with someone who is also in the line of medical. <laughs> and he was like, you know, you have to make sure that you really sleep because, you know, when you sleep, you have enough sleep. This is where your body starts to, you know, heal, um, heal immune rest, system. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I try as much as possible to stay healthy, eat healthy and whatnot. Again, I said you have to first prioritize yourself before you actually... Look into, you know, take care of other take people. Take care of other people. Yeah, but not being right. selfish. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. I have to make it very clear. We are not being selfish here. But yeah, but but I, I guess this is actually something that it's that I felt that it's good about uh, our podcast is because you are not the first uh, guest that actually talks about mm. mental, mental health issues mm. and stuff. Mm. Like. Because we have guests who went through dark uh, times. You know, and then after that, you know, when how did they come out about it and actually talked about it and stuff and whatnot. So I, I guess that is something that it's becoming more and more um, um, known about in the society now. You know, so we've been talking about a lot about like, you know, why when you have fever and you go see doctor, it's fine. But when you are feeling mm. sick up here and you go see a, a therapist or, or a psychologist or even a psychiatrist, why do you consider that? As a no, you know, because you're afraid that your society is going to look at you different. Mm. I think people look at, you know, mental health and when you have like, you know, depression or anxiety, you know, and, and all these, you know, sort of like mental, it's not mental illness, it's mental, yeah, it's maybe mental illness. Yeah. You say that mental illness, yeah, right? It is. Um, it is, uh, they stigma- it's been stigmatized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See? And I think because people have this, uh, you know, mentality by saying that, you know, uh, the moment you go and see psychiatrist, you gila. Yeah. Itu orang gila, by the way. Itu gila. You, you don't want to be with her. Or yeah. You don't want to be with yeah, him. Yeah. You know, and they bilang, and then the worst thing is like, oh, semua orang keturunan gila. <laughs> <laughs> that is that. Ah. And that is wrong. Yeah, yeah. That's and that why. is wrong, you know. I mean, I, I honestly speaking, when I had my baby, um, okay, this is maybe a bit of, you know, sharing that I would like to do, uh, to share. Yeah. I had, um, okay, so at that time, 2020, right? I was a political secretary. Uh, and there was that snap election in, yeah. in Sabah, right? And then a sudden change of government, right? And I, it was very, people didn't, I mean, we ex- let's just say, uh, right, being in politics, you just want to, you want, you have to know that you are going to win. Mm. Yeah, I mean that is that is every politician will have to see that any you want to win, right? And we sort of like lost the government at that time, and you were like told like, okay, you're not you're not going back to office. And during the election, I was there in the labor room. <laughs> oh. You know, I could not you know yeah, help okay. out much during okay. during the 2020 election, and then. At that my, at that time, my thought was like, okay, lepas I beranak and I go back to office. But it didn't happen that way, mm. right? I went through a dark time where I just thought that what 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 the heck am I doing with my life? What is gonna do with my life? It's just like I felt that the whole world just fell on me, and it it, it sort of like sort of got me into a bit of a depressed mode, right? And there's a word for. I mean, after labor, you know, there's a word for postpartum him, you know? blues, lah. But what is it in Basam Layu? I don't know. Meroyan. Is it Meroyan? 
Yeah. Oh, yes. okay, Moroyan. Yeah. <laughs> but it lucky is. enough, it 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 was under control, lah. But uh, I I went through that. I think it's part of it. It's because of the hormonal changes. You know, you're suddenly your you know progesterone level just just drops down after you know, uh, branak and. You were just going through that phase where there's that hormonal haywire going on and with your surrounding that it was very uncertain at that time. And I went through that, you know. And I I was very, very lucky to have a very good friend of mine <laughs> uh, who is also in the studio with me. <laughs> right after now. that, we, don't, we didn't set up a camera because usually we set out another camera to point at our guests or our producers. Yeah. Ah, yeah, so. Shout out to a good friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who's also in the studio sitting down with us, who was actually always there to support, you know, and I had my parents, I mean, my mom, you know, to there to like, to say like, you know, it's not the end of the world, you see. Um, it was quite a, a dark few months of, of, of that. Um, and I think, in fact, you know, this is something that people don't really talk about, you know, and it was just a point where I feel like, oh, wow, am I going gila like this or not, you see. Um, but I managed to, you know, move towards from from that from that uh, from that particular you know phase of my life. But I went through that, you see. But it's also very important to to also have a very very strong support supporting uh, support system around you. Yeah, Again, okay, you know, yeah. it's that you know a people around you that is very important. Um, mental health again, you know, all these people always stigmatize about it, saying that oh, you gila, no, you're not. You just all, all you need to be to be honest is for that person to actually be willing to talk about it, right? How I mean, this is how I handle it now. Talk about it, and then you know, and and be <sighs> how to say this is it's, it's very <laughs> very touching for me. Talk about it. Have a good support system, and if you really need help from therapists and reach out, just reach out. Yeah, just reach out. Yeah, yeah. but I, 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 I was very lucky to have a very strong support system yeah. around me that it, it made me sane again. Yeah, so I, I think um, to have whoever that is watching this again, if let's say you do uh, see a friend that it's not well, yes, and you felt that something is wrong. Um, just, just, just ask uh, if, if it's okay. You don't, you don't have to solve that person's issue. Correct. They just want to be listened. Yeah, they just want to be. Yeah, yeah you that, just that's sit the there and be a listener. That's yeah, all, that, right? that is the most important thing, you know. You, you know, people going through this dark time, they don't, they don't expect you. I mean, this is my, uh, Nick, and this is my uh, sort of, uh, what do you call this, um, experience. It's not that you don't, <laughs> you don't want that person to solve your problem. Yeah. You just want people to listen, but you can yeah. actually you you actually know what to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, so, right. I mean, like you know, and I, I I've I've had some politician friends who actually been you know talking to me about it. That some some of them were like, you know, during the sudden change of government mm. in twenty twenty of uh in in federal and mm, things, mm. and some of them went to like you know anxiety or depressed. Like oh, why why is this suddenly yeah. you know like this, um. But again, at the end of the day, it's how you just need to handle it properly and you have to have your friends around who are really, really, you know, you have to be very vigilant of your friend too. And for me, you know, when I see people, you know, looking towards that and I will like just call them and say, are you okay? Yeah, right, right. All they want to know is, uh, all you, all you, the, the best thing you can do is just ask them, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, um... Yeah, I, I felt that yeah we have touched this uh, more than once in, in the show itself. Lah. But I always joke so that to close it. Lah, huh? I always say, now when I ask a friend, are you okay? I have to follow up and say, by the way, I'm not selling you insurance. I'm not also <laughs> selling you MLM. <laughs> I just want to make sure you are okay or not. Yeah. Because now, I'm, also I want to ask a friend that has been not, we have not been in touch for a long time. Uh, then I'm like, do you want to catch up over coffee or beer or something? They're, they're like, <laughs> you want to become duit ka? I'm like, no, man. <laughs> become duit. I think, I think this is the, also the, the thing, you know, the social norm that we are facing Done. right now. Yeah. I think, no, because I had this conversation in my last podcast mm. about, you know, a lot of our young generation now are having two jobs. Yes. Right. Yes. There's that nine to five job. Yes. And there's also that extra income, you know, jual insurance, yeah, yeah, yeah. MLM, yeah. you know. And 
I think some people would want to, you know, the first thing they will think is like, oh, komo jual saya barang kah? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, for for God for God's sake, you know, the reality is that this is what we are facing right now. Mm. You know, mm. we everyone is struggling to to have money, but again, yeah. <laughs> janganlah begitu, you know. <laughs> So yeah, so next time if you have a friend who asks you for coffee, just say yes lah. If let's say that person end up selling insurance, just say no lah. <laughs> Can straight to the point, man. <sighs> What's so hard about it? Man? Why you need to Nanti ask? Nanti lah, bah, aku jual sama saya tu mila. <laughs> Kau panggil saya sekarang pun mau pimi nung kopi saja, bah. Kau tahu juga, brother. Saya ni pun tiada duit juga macam kau bilang. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, let let's. Uh, I think we have to wrap up in in a very short bit, lah. Huh? Yeah. So um, you were talking about your podcast just now. So what do you see or what do you wish to uh, achieve through your uh, uh, smart talks? About? All right. So I think you know when I first this is my so this week would be oh next week will be my eighth episode. Yeah. Right. So it comes out every fortnight. Mm. Right. And my focus when I when I first initiated this podcast, I thought of having a podcast that really uh, talks about the. I'm a realist <laughs> in, okay. in 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 you know in in politics, mm. la, yeah, and the way I think of things. Um, yes, there is some element of uh, idealism there, but sometimes I'm also a realist, mm. and I find that there is a vacuum of of you know a uh, lack of awareness among the young generation in terms of you know the current issues that we have in Sabah um, all I want for this podcast to actually inform the people on the ground that this is you know the reality and again because of you know my interest and also I I, I like to look for solutions I don't like to talk about problems mm. round and round you're just going around the Marlboro bush <laughs> you know <laughs> But it doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah, it doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah. So what I what I do is like I invite guests who are uh, you know they are they are expert in in the field that we're going to talk about, and sort of like you know give discuss about it, and I try to make it as simple as possible mm. for mm. the you know the people of uh, the younger people to understand it. For commoners like me, I'm going to say it. Uh, so commoners, uh, like commoners, yeah. uh, to to understand, <laughs> right? Yeah. And to actually realize that okay, this is the reality that's happening in 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 Sabah, right? And hopefully with that, I know I know it will start. We will start. It's slow, but it's mm. it is it is building up, yeah, yeah. right? And I hope that people will start to be thinking about okay, this is the reality, and how do we go about it, right? It's it's a nudge. For both sides, lah, at the top, <laughs> and also yeah, on the ground. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully, with this podcast, we could actually, uh, for, uh, for me, I think my aim is to build the bridge of understanding between, from top and bottom. So it's very apolitical, right? Um, you know, if I think there's uh, wrong with this government or that government or this opposition or that opposition, you know, I, I will I'll talk about, talk about it, it yeah. right? And let the people on the ground or my listeners to actually decide or to have their own opinion about it. Mm. So this is why I want, at the end of the day, is to educate the people of Sabah. Okay. All right. Uh, I, I'm not sure whether... Uh, I know. Lah. I think no. So before we close it, uh, once again, the, we're going to drop the social media down in the link description. You can find... Uh, Joe's uh, Instagram, Facebook, and also the podcast link, so yes. that you can go and have a listen. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether you are Sarawakian or you are Sabahan or you are from other parts of the world. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's just something that you can listen and learn about, right? Um, so before we close, before we say goodbye, like the show name, feel good, All right? So what is your feel good? It can be th experience, it can be a, a, a ideology, it can be a quote, it can be a movie. What is your feel good like? For example, I'm sure we are still human after all, right? There are times where we're like, it's a long day. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure even Superman would feel the same way as well. So what is your feel I, I I like this quote. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a Portuguese quote, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it says that if you didn't take risks, you'll never get your snacks. If you don't take risk, you will never be able to get your snacks. You will never be able to take your snacks. <laughs> yeah lah. Okay. You, 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 you. If you don't f 
push yourself, you will never yeah. be able to, you know, get your opportunities. Yeah. I mean, if you just want to stay there and be idle, you're not a tree, right? Yeah. <laughs> Even tree grow. Even you know? tree grow yeah. down, right? Yeah. Up and uh, down yeah. below. Yeah. Hey. So that that is that is a uh, one of the course. And another thing for me is that's just one word is faith. Faith. Whatever you do, you just have to have faith. faith. Right. It's you. you <laughs> Just take the risk, lah, bro. Yeah. Just okay. take the risk. Just take the risk. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. I. I mean, we can also say the same. The same word as saying that. Yeah. Uh. Comfort zone is where dreams die, lah. Yeah. Right. That's a nice one too. <laughs> thank you for adding yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So. Uh. Once again, thank you very much. Uh. For Joe coming to the studio and and Thanks, and talk to us and. Yeah. I I learned a lot. Actually, we have another recording which is on her show. Which you wanted to watch it again? Go to the podcast. Smart talks, ba. Yeah. Right. So thank you very much. We wish you uh, all the best. Yes. Wish your family well. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. you too. <laughs> thank you very much. And that's all for this episode. Once again, if you enjoy this, consider subscribing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank bye you so bye. much. Bye.